Hello there, it's Jeff Harrison here. Today we'll look at my brand new macro for Corel Photo Paint called Magic Erase. I'm going to grab some files that I have in a folder. This is a folder that's sitting on my desktop named Clipped. These files aren't clipped out yet, but they will be in a moment here. Just loading them into uh, Photo Paint. Now here's an example where I just want to quickly show you the difference between my macro and uh, a built-in option into Corel uh, Photo Paint X3 and X4. If you were to go to the image menu, there is a function called Cutout Lab. And in this particular setup, uh, I can't quite see the whole display here really easily. Let's see if I can scale it down a little bit. Something like that. Anyway, with this built-in tool in Corel Draw, you can go around the shape like this. And then you uh, grab the fill bucket and go inside there. And then, let's see if I can hit the OK button here. Actually, you want to just leave the, the clip out in my case just to give you a quick idea. But what I wanted to point out here is that if we were to zoom in on this, uh, what it did is it this area here is partially transparent, and I, that's not something that I would have wanted. The edge is not exact; it's kind of soft around the edges. So that may be a good tool for certain things such as uh, maybe working on feathers or uh, semi-transparent things. In this case, I just wanted a, a hard clip out of the image. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to this point right here. Now, you'll need to know a few basic masking things with um, to use this macro. I suspect you may know that, um, and I'll, I'll give you a walk through some of the steps now. So what do we need to do? The main thing that this macro is intended for is situations such as this, where you have a solid area around the thing that you want to clip out and to have a, over a transparent background. So what you can do is if you go to your mask tools, you specifically want to look for the magic wand tool most of the time. And uh, if you press the W key, that's the built-in shortcut to launch that tool. And you should see a little icon that looks like what you see on screen there. So what we want to do is just left click on the shape like this. And that's about it. In this case, we have a watch for your tolerance. I've got it set to 6 at the moment, but you may need to increase that or decrease that for certain, fun certain projects. But I'm going to go ahead and launch the, the macro here. And what this will do is it gives you a few uh, options here for feathering. What it's going to do is, is give you the ability to feather uh, into, uh, in this case, into the wine bottle uh, to various pixels. These are 1, 0 through 3. Those are cover almost any case that you would have. So I'm going to try, I'm going to show you what 0 looks like. And just by pressing that 0 button, it is now clipped it out of there in one press. If you want to do what's called a fringe test, I put this. I kept adding features to this as I went along, and one of the things that I, I thought might be handy is to quickly be able to press a button. And you can see here that you know there is a bit of fringing there, and so that's well, let's get rid of that and let's undo this. Go back to our original step there. Uh, I'm going to press Control One, so we're zoomed uh, into our project one to one. One pixel on the file is one pixel on the screen. Let's try a feathering of two just to sh give you an idea of what the difference would look like. So now it's feathered inwards too. Let's try our fringe test again. So that's much better now. If we were to zoom up, something like this would probably be, uh, be quite suitable. And uh, once we're done with that, we just delete that uh, background fringe element. It's basically, it just drops in a, a black rectangle behind your object so that you can see what's going on. Now, the other thing I wanted to point out here is that I also built in an auto crop function. What that means is that usually in these cases where you put it against the transparent background, you don't really need to keep the excess space there. So the pressing this button is basically, I want you to think of this macro as a top-down workflow. The next step would be to press this button, and you can see that it cropped it down to the outer dimensions of the bottle. There are some extra pixels there. Uh, but what I want to show you next is, let's go to this Help uh, button here. What I have here is the ability to designate how much of a crop margin I want. How much space do you want between the thing that's cropped and the edge of the file? Most of the time you want to give yourself a little bit of breathing room, but maybe not always. Anyway, you've got full flexibility there. Over here is gives you the option to um, go through your file structure to find out where do you want to save exported PSD files. That's only for the PSD function that's over here. This is things that you generally just set one time. I'm going to cancel out of there. Now what's interesting here is if I press the PSD button, it's going to export it to that folder and automatically close the document. Why that's handy is that 
Uh, it just allows you to very quickly go through a whole bunch of files and save them as Photoshop files to a certain folder of your choice. Now the reason I chose Photoshop files, while there's nothing really wrong with the Corel's photo paint format, there aren't any really reliable quick viewing programs at this time to see what those files look like in a quick viewing capacity. So PSD is just a more general or more uh, universal format. So when I press the PSD button, the file is gone and it's saved to disk. And to prove that it's saved on disk, you can see that it now shows up in that folder as a Photoshop file. Alright, so let's move on and I'm going to blast through some remaining test images that I have here just to show you how the product works. Here we have a balloon. I'm just going to zoom out here by pressing the F4 key and we need to get rid of this blue background. And we can see that we have a little bit of bl blue area inside the I'm not sure what you call that, the basket, I guess, of this uh, balloon, hot air balloon. So I'm going to um, left click inside my document. You can leave this uh, macro open, by the way, during these processes. I'm going to press the W key to bring up our magic wand tool. I'm going to left click on part of the sky there. And you can see that we can see some sparklies here at this point. I'm going to increase my tolerance to 10. I think that's usually about the default anyway. Now I'm going to hold down the shift key. And I'm going to add to the existing selection by clicking down in here. There, we've got most of our um, blue selected, except for inside the uh, basket there. You could zoom in and use the wand tool and, and shift, add to that if you wanted to, or you could press the select similar button up on the macro here, and that'll look for chunks of blue inside there. So it did it a little bit. You can always zoom in and, and deal with it manually as well, or let's see if I can get it from a distance here. There we go, something like that. All right, let's try a feathering of zero, see what that looks like. So it's clipped it out. Let's put it against a black background. Well, it's not too bad. It just looks a little bit rough. I'm going to uh, undo that and let's let's feather it. Let's say let's go for two. Put it over a black background. Well, it's it's a smoother clip out for sure. Um, so let's let's say we're happy with that. Crop it down and then save it as a PSD. And it's gone. And if we look on our folder, it's sitting in there already clipped out for lots of different programs can open that kind of file. Here we have a baby. It's going to click on the white area. I'm going to feather, let's say, one. Check out for fringing. I don't see any white fringes around the edge, so that's good. Uh, let's delete that. Crop it down. Save it as a PSD. All right, we've got some kind of a monkey here. All right, let's feather uh, two on this guy. I'm not going to bother with the fringe test. I'm just going to crop it down and uh, save it as a PSD. And how about this one? I'm just kind of zipping along here, but uh, the point is that I'm just showing you that uh, basically I built a tool for myself. I'm just holding down my shift key as I click here with the wand tool, by the way. Um, I made a tool for myself to be able to quickly clip out numerous images. You know, if I was given 20 or 30 images and I had to just make them all transparent, this is absolutely the fastest way to blast through them. So I'm going to crop this one to three pixels, check it for fringing, none. Get rid of that, crop it down, PSD. Done. So I hope you get the idea there that uh, it's very fast to uh, clip out elements, especially if they have fairly consistent background or if you're comfortable with using the existing masking tools in Corel Photo Paint.